As you can tell, it's spring ish outside <laughs> but in here we're getting ready to celebrate the next season and that's summer of course and today we're making a very exciting announcement that will be watched closely right across the hemisphere it's time for Toronto 2015's official draw for the Pan Am football or soccer tournament here in Canada and the US of course we call the sport soccer I think most of the Americas know it as football hoy vamos a hacer el sorteo para el torneo the football. Whatever the game's called, all countries want the same thing. Gold. <laughs> Tout le monde veut l'or. Todos quieren, quieren la medalla de oro. Everyone is passionate about the sport they love, of course. But I think soccer, the beautiful game, really brings nations and communities together. It will add energy and life to our games. And I want to thank those who are bringing this tournament together for us and with us. So thank you to everyone at the Confederation of North, Central American, and Caribbean Association Football, CONCACAF. Especially Horace Reed, Carlos Fernandez, and R Ricardo Sarri who are in the room with us today. Thank you. And a special welcome to the Honorable Lisa Raitt, Minister of Transport, La Ministre de Transport du Canada, over here on our, my right, and to her two sons, JC and Billy. And uh, also, I believe we have, yes, I see you now, thank you, um, the member for Provincial Parliament for Davenport, Ms. Christina Martins, and welcome to you as well. Uh, bienvenido especial al Consul General de Ar Argentina, José María Venare. And consul, uh, the Consul General from Trinidad and Tobago, T Tobago, pardon me, <laughs> that's terrible, I'm sorry, from Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Vidaya Gian Tota Maharaj. Aujourd'hui, j'ai le plaisir de vous présenter les membres du Conseil d'administration de, des Jeux Panem et Perepanem, Mr. Joe Halstead, Mr. Chris Rudge, and Mr. Victor Garcia. I'd like to also extend a warm welcome to the members of our Latin American Working Group, Maria Figueredo and Marcela Aranda. Now this next, this next welcome I have a chance to redeem myself because we have some soccer fans in the room and notably from Trinidad and Tobago. Where are they? I also see some Colombian shirts very close by. Now you may have also noticed some young rising soccer stars in the room. Today we have 12 players from the Brazilian Soccer Academy to help us with the draw. We'll call them up in a few minutes, but first I also want to turn things over to our host for the event, singer, songwriter, Amanda Martinez, and our analysts, Nigel Reed, Duane De Rosario, and Helen Strombos. Muy buenas tardes. Let's hear it for la Escuela de Samba. Wow. <laughs> Qué bonita música. I have to tell you that I am so thrilled to be here to be announcing the men's and women's soccer draws. Uh, it is such an honor. Es un gran, gran placer para mí estar con todos ustedes. And um, to help us today, I have a few people here who know a lot about the games. In the center, uh, we have Nigel Reed, who you will recognize as a sports analyst on television, most notably covering the FIFA World Cup on CBC. Thank you so much for joining us. Beside him, we have the former Women's Team Canada soccer player and the first Canadian goal scorer in a World Cup final, Helen Stumbo. Welcome. Finally, on the other side of Nigel, we have the Major League Soccer legend and all-time leading scorer for the Canadian national team, Dwayne De Rosario. So, 
Nigel, Dwayne, Helen, thank you so much for being here and uh, we're very excited to have you all here today. Um, I'm going to come over here right now and explain to you what is going to be happening. Uh, in pot number one, we have the teams from North America, uh, Canada as the host country being the red ball, and uh, Canada has requested to be in group B. And uh, in pot number two, we have uh, the two teams from South America. In pot number three, we have one team from the Caribbean and one team representing Central America. And in pot number four, we have the third and fourth qualifiers for South America. And then in group uh, B, as I mentioned before, uh, we have the positions um, with Canada re represented by the red ball who have requested to be in group B and the positions for group A. So right now, I would like to invite up to the front some of the Brazilian Soccer Academy players to help me do the draw. Excellent, great to have all of you here. Uh, and right now we're going to invite the Honorable Lisa Rate to draw the very first ball. Uh, we know it representing, is <laughs> yes, <laughs> representing like Canada, the red one. So <laughs> swish it around. Swish it around. Pick the for officiality and hold it up. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, and I'll open it up. So for group. B, we have that. This should say. This should actually say Canada. <laughs> this says Mexico on it. <laughs> we did pick the red. I knew it should have went blue. <laughs> <laughs> this should be Canada. Um, so we're gonna go back and you work it out. Yeah. <laughs> Do we want to redo this for the cameras with Canada coming out? Yeah. <laughs> you got the right ball. <laughs> you know what, I want to introduce the uh, Brazilian Academy who have joined us today, so let's hear it for Michael, Michael <laughs> Emilia, Darius, Carly, Kawani, and Elisa. Big hand, thank you so much. They've got a big job here. Okay, Alyssa, sorry. Um, okay, so. Wanna try it again? Let's try it again. <laughs> we were not here. Okay, big hand for Elisa, okay. right? So let's draw. Ahead, Billy, swish it around. Swish it around. The red. <laughs> and we are drawing for group B, thank you. And officially now. <laughs> In group B, Canada. Canada. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and now we are going to do the draw, Alyssa, for the position for Canada in group B. Swish around. Nicely done. Thank you. <laughs> So position for Canada in group B1. Okay, now we are drawing for group A. Michael, go ahead. Swish that around. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So for group A, we have Mexico. And now we need to draw for position of Mexico. So Kwani. Thank you. So position of Mexico in group A1. Nigel, can you tell us about the Canadian and Mexican women's teams? I'd be delighted to, Amanda. You know, when I was a little boy, I wanted to do what these guys did. 
but I wasn't good enough. I wasn't close to being good enough. <laughs> but I was good enough to talk about football or soccer. And I've had the opportunity over the years to talk to a lot of players, a lot of internationals, and the one answer that they always come up with is that just about the proudest moments of their careers, bar none, was pulling on that national jersey for the full, first time. Uh, the heart just about breaking out of their chest with, with pride. So that's what it means to these players to play international soccer. It's not for everyone. Making that jump from club to international soccer is a big leap on occasions, and only the very best make it. Helen, you had that opportunity, and you made it. And if it hadn't been for a dodgy knee in 1999, you would have played in the Pan Am Games, the first women's tournament in 99. You played uh, in 95 in, in the World Cup. Just talk a little bit about that emotion uh, and that leap uh, in terms of class, playing club soccer to international soccer. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I think my first uh, competition was playing against Italy and um, my second game was playing against the United States who at the time were the best team in the world and I literally thought that I was going to die and I wouldn't be able to survive the entire 90 minutes. Uh, I couldn't fathom that I could actually participate at that level of competition for that long and I remember having to, as the games went on and I thought there's no way I'm going to die on the field, like this is not possible. Uh, I'd have to break the game down into five minute increments just just because it was so mentally and emotionally draining and you want to perform your best so for me the only way I could do that was to actually shorten the game into five minute intervals and then I would play a five minute interval I'd look at the clock and I'd say okay you're only playing five more minutes and that's kind of the the intensity of but the the pride of putting on that jersey I mean it's you know somebody asked me the other day what it was like to play in the World Cup and I, I uh, they said did you really kind of take take advantage of where you were and you know the experience there and I said you know when you're there and you're playing for your country you really are thinking about that and only that. There is nothing else that exists beyond that. So that was kind of my experience. And when it comes to Canada and Mexico, we know the Mexicans very well. We've played them many, many times. Uh, it used to be kind of whenever we played Mexico, we thought, you know, there was a game that we should win. And nowadays, I'm sure they're going to meet somewhere down the competition. And uh, they're a tough, they've really improved. And uh, you'll see if they compete against each other, it'll be a tough game. But both of them, class of each group. And you know, Amanda, there are similarities between these two as far as the women's competition is concerned. This is the fifth edition of the women's competition at the Pan Am Games. Canada and Mexico are the only two nations that will have participated at all previous four and on to number five this time. Canada comes in as the defending champions, a gold, a silver and a bronze over the piece. The Mexicans, uh, a silver and two bronzes as well, had to settle for bronze on home soil four years ago. So that there is some making up to do as far as the Mexicans are concerned. You can, as Helen says, absolutely expect they'll come in fired up. And Canada, of course, as hosts, have that responsibility too. So two teams to look out for in uh, the women's competition for sure. Fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, Nigel and Helen. And I, I can't even imagine like the what goes through. It's wonderful to hear you speak firsthand about that. You know, as one of the players. Wow, the pressure. Okay, so now the pressure is mounting here. Here. We are on to pot number two, and uh, Amelia, we're going to be drawing for group B right now. So swish around and let us know who will be in group B. Thank you. Group B, Brazil. Okay, Alyssa, so we're now drawing for the position for group B for Brazil. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> Brazil is B2. <coughs> okay, Amelia, now we are drawing for group A. <laughs> Nicely done. Thank you. <coughs> So group A, Argentina. And for position of Argentina in group A. Thanks, Kwani. A3. <laughs> 
three for Argentina. Okay, Darius, now we are going to be drawing for group B and from pot number three. Thank you. Group B, Costa Rica. <laughs> And position, Alyssa, for group. Thank you. So Costa Rica B3. And now we are drawing for group A. Darius. <laughs> Thank you. Trinidad and Tobago. A. And position for Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you, Kwani. A2. Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, and now for the final pot, we are going to be asking Carly to do the draw for group B first. Thank you. Ecuador. And position for Ecuador, please, Alyssa. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are really good at this. Whoops. B4 for Ecuador. And the final in group A. Can you draw for us, Carly? Thank you. Colombia. And for the position for Colombia, Kwani, in group A. A for Colombia. So there you have it, the women's teams. Uh, Nigel, can you uh, give us your thoughts on, on the games in general? I certainly can, Amanda. There's some juicy games there, Helen. Uh, it's worth bearing in mind, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> that Canada has twice before hosted the Pan Am Games in 1967 and 1999, and on those occasions, the Canadian team made it to the semi-finals. So uh, we'll get on to that a little bit later with the men's uh, draw, but let's, Helen, consider some of these games uh, in the women's competition. Canada the hosts coming in as the defending champions, and one of those early games is going to be against Brazil, one of the most powerful teams in the women's game. I haven't got a ticket. I think I'm going to buy one. I'm excited. That's going to be a, what a great game that's going to be for people to watch. I think, uh, I mean, everybody's, if, if you've followed the women's game, you know Brazil, you know Marta, and uh, the team is just such an exciting team to watch. I love watching their technique and their skill. Um, big game for Canada there. And, you know, Costa Rica just hosted the U17 World Cup, so they've actually invested a lot of money into their team. So, you know, I, I always say the world is getting smaller. I've watched all the World Cups. I've watched all the men's World Cups. And every year I watch them, they're, they're, the level of competition is getting tighter. There are teams coming out that you wouldn't expect to come out. So, it's a, it's a strong group. It's a strong group. Uh, and you make a very good point there, Helen, about uh, the standard of the women's game improving in leaps and bounds, bearing in mind the first Pan Am women's competition wasn't until 1999. This is only the fifth edition. But...
uh, almost across the board, uh, countries uh, in Central America, South America, and of course more traditionally North America where the women's game has a stronger support, uh, the, the, the playing field is leveling. There are no easy games anymore, are there? Well, I think even watching the last World Cup and Japan winning that, that final game against the U.S., I mean, back in the day, that just wasn't expected. And uh, seeing that happen, and then Venezuela making it through in the U-17 World Cup to the final, I just think you're seeing so many teams that are competitive. I don't think you can count anyone out. When you're playing at this level of competition, uh, it doesn't matter, you know, what your stats are from previous years. When you play at this level, everybody comes to play and everybody comes to compete. And uh, when we went into the World Cup in 95, I know that the, the first two games we played, we were expected to win, and we ended up losing both games. And, uh, you know, uh, what, you just... You on the team? How did you how possibly did that happen? lose both teams? I did score, what though. What was going on? I scored. <laughs> Straight from a corner. Uh, apparently. Yeah, there we go. Bad goalkeeping. No, great corner kick. Great corner kick. Great corner kick. All about, all about, uh, all about technique, I'm sure. You know, actually, the day before I scored my goal, no word of a lie, I was, I was training, and I used to take all the set pieces for the national team, and uh, I actually told my roommate, who was uh, one of my closest friends at the time, that I'm like, my dad has taught me how to, you know, bend it like Beckham, I guess, what you would call it. And I was like, I can score directly off corner kicks. And uh, whether I, I, I premeditated it. <laughs> but, and I mean, uh, that, the serious point here, I mean, that's a confidence thing. And when you get into competition, it's a short, short competition. You haven't got time to get out of step and, and play a bad game, either individually or as a team. You've got to get on the field from minute one, believe, have that confidence that you've trained all those years and months for, haven't you? Yeah, and I think it's even uh, maintaining that, that that competitiveness and that level throughout the game because it's a long game. And I think, uh, you know, I think back to when we played England and, um, you know, we were coming on really strong and I think we kind of took a little bit of a step back thinking, okay, this isn't going to be that bad, we're okay here, and then we ended up not doing so well. <laughs> but a corner kick for the ages, <laughs> and before anybody bent it like Beckham, <laughs> Helen Stumos did. I think it's time for the men's draw. Back to you, Amanda. Thank you so much. Yes, now is the time for the men's soccer draw, but I just wanted to just ask for a big round of applause for the helpers that were up here from the Brazilian <laughs> Soccer Academy. And uh, we have some more wonderful soccer players coming up right now. So if you could please come up to the front now. Uh, more soccer players from the Brazilian um, Soccer Academy to help draw for the men's soccer team. <coughs> and uh, this is obviously a similar process. Um, as the host nation, the men's team has requested to be in Group A. Um, and right now, it is a pleasure to invite to do the draw for the first uh, red ball, um, our MP, Christina Martins. Muchas gracias. Great to have you here. Muy bien, gracias. So please, give it a swish and uh, pull out the red ball, please, the first ball. Thank you. <laughs> and... So, for Group A, Canada. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so now we are going to be drawing for the position for Canada in Group A. So, David, you can take out a swish and then the red. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. So position for Canada, A1, the men's soccer team. Okay, Noah, so now we are going to be drawing for Group B. Thank you. Mexico, Group B. And Ian for the position for Mexico in Group B. Thank you. Mexico is B4. Nigel, 
thoughts on Canadian and Mexican. Amanda, you know, you know, there was a time, there was a time, ladies and gentlemen, when the gentleman to my right wasn't a legend. <laughs> it's true. It's true. He was just an aspiring professional hoping to make his way in the game. And at the age of 20, Dwayne De Rosario played for Canada in one of his first international games and tournaments in the 1999 Pan Am Games in Winnipeg. Typically Canadian, just off the podium in fourth place. But what sort of experience was that for you as a young player with that exposure, Dwayne, to international competition when you were just trying to make it as a pro? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a dream come true for me as a young kid. Uh, for any young kid, you aspire to, to reach the highest level. Um, and especially a, a, as a young footballer growing up, I always wanted to play at the highest level. So having the opportunity to represent my country was the ultimate uh, level. And, and the sentiments are very same for the, for the men and the women. You want to uh, represent your country. So when I got that call up, it was, it was, uh, it was one of the greatest moments of, of my career, having the opportunity to not only represent my country, but showcase my talent my community and um, it, was a, it was a moment I'll never forget. The legend started pretty quickly because you scored in your first game and then he scored two goals in his next game. Yeah, Isn't that all, right? All with my eyes closed though. <laughs> all with your eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, having the opportunity to represent your country and score, again, it was, it was a fantastic moment in my career and, and I knew that, you know, it, when you go out there you have to understand it's not just uh, you and your family supporting you, you got the whole country riding on your back so you have that pressure and to, to represent your country you feel it but it's a, it's a pressure of, of of gratitude, it's a, it's a, it's a pressure of, um, that, that you want to you feel and something that I always wanted to experience and I was very fortunate to experience and you know, it was through Pan Am Games to give me that opportunity to experience that, that feeling. I got a feeling that tournament was won by the Mexicans. They won it a lot. Four times, four times champions of the Pan Am Games. I, I, I'm sure you may have lost count of the number of times you've played against Mexico at, at, at different levels. But just give us a, 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 an inkling of, of just how intense the Mexicans play, how much it means to them on the international field of play. Oh, I mean, uh, in, in Mexico, they eat, sleep, breathe uh, football. They, every, everything uh, surrounds the country is about football. Football. It's about the development of, of the next the next generation coming up, uh, and and uh, you know we guaranteed to see a very exciting Mexican team, a young uh, Mexican team that will potentially see a lot of those guys um, playing for the national team in the future. So hopefully you'll see an even more exciting team coming from the Canadian side. We have some young, um, great talents coming through the ranks, and we're definitely looking forward to uh, matching up uh, against a, a very good uh, Mexican team, hopefully in the finals. Amanda, here's some stats for you: four gold medals, three silver medals for the Mexicans over the duration of the Pan Am Games. Watch out for them. They'll, they'll be close. Very close. Wow. Well, I have my Mexican father sitting in the audience here. <laughs> So it's going to be exciting. <laughs> okay, so now we are drawing for, in from pot number two, group A first. Kawan, please do the honors. Swish it around. Great, thank you. Okay, so for group A, Brazil. And now drawing for position for Brazil, David, in group A. Awesome, thank you. So Brazil will be A4. Okay. And now we are going to be drawing for group B. Thank you. Uruguay. Okay, and position for Uruguay in group B. Thank you. Uruguay is B2. Okay, now for pot number three, Guillerme, can you draw for group B? Sorry, group A. Thank you. So group A is Panama. And 
And for position in group A, David. Thank you. A3 for Panama. Okay, now we are drawing for group B. <laughs> Nicely done, thank you. For group B, we have Trinidad and Tobago. And for the position of Trinidad and Tobago, Ian. Thank you. B3, Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, and now our final pot, pot number four, drawing for group A. Thank you. Next one. Peru in group A. And now for the position of Peru, David. <laughs> Great, thank you. So position for Peru is A2. And the final country for group B. Thank you. Thanks, Juan. Paraguay. And for position of Paraguay. Thank you. B1 for Paraguay. So there you have it. We have all of our uh, men's soccer uh, games. And uh, I would love to hear again from, from you, from Nigel and uh, Dwayne. Thoughts? Well, you know what, Amanda, I get the distinct feeling there may be some Trinidad and Tobago fans in the room. <laughs> <laughs> just, just saying. <laughs> Here's the stat. Bronze medal, 1967. It's been a while, folks. <laughs> we expect great things. Peru, Panama, making their debut in the competition. We'll get on to some of the heavyweights in a moment, Twain. But uh, it's the first chance for these two South American teams to experience the Pan Am Games. Uh, that's got to be a, a daunting prospect for any footballer, regardless of nation. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a great experience for them to travel north of uh, north of the, uh, the world to, to come over here uh, and, and to, to play against uh, different competition, competition that they're not used to at that age. So I'm looking forward to seeing seeing uh, uh, what they have in store. Um, but I guarantee you this, they're not coming to disappoint. They're coming to show what they have and show their ability, and they're coming to uh, strut their stuff. Well, you've been through this. You've played all over the world. I mean, when it comes to uh, being a young player, uh, a young international who has technical ability, then you're asked to play in, in different conditions, or on different surfaces. I mean, there can't be any excuses, either personally or as a team. You just have to get on with it, don't you? Definitely, you have to put all that um, all that stuff aside. When you uh, get on the field, you just have to think about what you do good and what you're good at, and what your coach uh, wants you to do in terms of strategy, and and just get on with your game and just embrace the moment. And you know, like I said, I remember in 1999, uh, this Pan Am's a, a lot more different because you we have the opportunity now to see uh, South American teams. When I played in it, it was Caribbean, uh, North American, and Central American teams. But this creates a very unique situation that we have the opportunity to see South American teams and, and be graced by uh, some of the skill and, and, and the level and the quality that they add to uh, the world of football. Well, you talk about South American teams, look at Group A. The hosts, Canada, Peru, Panama, and of course the hosts, the, the heavyweights, Brazil, four times Pan Am champions. And what is it about the Brazilians, Dwayne? Um, they just have a production line of good, young footballers. It just seems to never end. Yeah, I just want to clarify, uh, what age 
age are you allowed to play again in these games? Because when I look at that, I'm getting tempted to play myself. I mean, it's don't not, get too tempted. It's, it's not it's not often you have the opportunity to play against teams like Brazil and and world class South American teams. I mean, when you look at that group, you just say, wow, like I can't wait for the games to start. And I have to mention, I'm looking forward to the games. I'm also looking forward to the environment and the new state facility they built in Hamilton. I heard uh, great things about it, and I just can't wait to see a great product and a great facility. So we have to ask the question: Canada against Brazil. It really catches the eye in in group. Pay. Canada the hosts, many great things expected, but Brazil, four times champions, they're coming, and they're not just coming to make up the numbers, are they? No, they're coming to uh, show you why Brazil is known for Brazil around the world, and show you that, uh, uh, was it Jogo Bonito style of football, and um, you know, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a great uh, uh, competition, it's going to be a, uh, a very intense match against Canada, but if you want to, to make yourself known across the world, in, in the world of football, you have to play against the best and you don't get any better than teams uh, countries like Brazil and one quick question Uruguay Mexico in group B talk about intense Dwayne yeah anytime those uh, countries meet up you know it's gonna be it's, it's gonna be intense games uh, Mexico is always gonna have a lot of fans coming out and showing their support and their passion as they always do we see a great uh, Trinidad and contingency here showing their support already early letting their presence be felt and um, you know and that's what you look forward to these games you know the passion the pride um, throughout the fans and then of course seeing uh, um, great countries and and you, um, the future stars playing uh, before our very eyes here in here in Canada. We don't have a lot of those opportunities to to see this. So I encourage everyone to embrace the moment. Dwayne, Helen, a pleasure. Humbled uh, myself, uh, Amanda. It's all yours. Thank you so much. Now, muchísimas gracias. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank you, Nigel, Helen, for joining us. Wow. Thank you to all of you for being here today to be the first to find out. Um, a big hand for all of our young soccer players. From the Brazilian Academy to our MPs. Um, we are going to have a photo opportunity for all of the participants today. Hi, Pachi. Um, and I just wanted to let you know that you could go on to uh, Toronto2015.org to find out more information about the soccer tournament. And uh, we're going to take a photo now. But muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much for being here today. So, Denise. This is an amazing day for us. Yep. I mean, we have so much red, <laughs> red among all of us. How do you feel? I found it very exciting um, because I'd never witnessed anything like this before. You know, you, you, you look at games, you, you look at the Olympics, you look at the Pan Am Games, you don't know how it comes together. You normally look at the final product. Mm -hmm. So being here today to see how they they do the selections and then after that they build the schedules and also seeing that for us both our men and our women qualified mm -hmm. that's over the top for me it's a first experience just like yourself as well and this is all new for all of us mm -hmm. and it's very exciting especially when we have all our supporters we have our council generals and our friends and families with this big red flag <laughs> yeah <laughs> supporting us and it shows a lot of course we wear the red so mm -hmm. it's it's very prominent in the room. I think even when Vince was speaking about it as well, it seemed like it's so exciting because he did emphasize a lot about Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, definitely, because we are the only English-speaking country, as you see in the group, you know, in, in, in the finals as, as it's going to happen. So it means then that we of Trinidad and Tobago descent and Caribbean descent have to come out and really and truly, you know, raise our hands not only and raise our voices, not only in excitement of the games, but in support and in support in a real, real way and an enjoyment and, and, you know, just making sure that here, make our presence known. We are here. We are here in Canada and, you know, and we are doing some great things. Now, for being the only English speaking country in the whole, you know, Caricom, World, Caribbean and everywhere else, that is really, you know, the exception because I don't know how many would have attempted to qualify. Oh, yeah. Well, of course. Well, you know it all. A lot of the Pan Am countries, I mean, they're, they're in the Caribbean, there are about 20, about 23 of them. I don't know if all of them would have uh, fielded a team. But when you think about it, I am I'm exceedingly proud that, you know, um, Trinidad and Tobago men and Trinidad and Tobago women have been able to make this achievement. Okay, so look out there and give them a message on today. Yeah, woo! <laughs> <laughs> woo! Yes, <laughs> no, no. My voice is much stronger than that. But to the Trinidad and Tobago team, we are looking forward to seeing you here. We're all going to take the trip to Hamilton. 
wherever we are in this country, in Ontario, whether it be in Ottawa, whether it would be in Windsor, or out of Ontario, BC, Calgary, Halifax, let's all come together and just um, cheer on these two excellent teams. Cheer on our women and cheer on our men. Thank you. Well, Denise, thank you so much for having us here yeah. as well. And you know, we will do our best to do all the coverage as best as we can and have our supporters with our big red flags here for you as well. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks. Congrats, everyone. Yeah. Ready? Okay. So we're here at the concert, Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago. How do you feel right now? We have the list. Very enthusiastic. I'm Let's see that. Let's see well, the cheers. You have a big excited. red flag yes, behind you yeah. Cheers to so Trinidad and Tobago for qualifying for the, for the Pan Am Games this year in Canada. And I'm proud to be the Consul General so that I'll be in person to cheer our teams. So you're going to go to every single game? I will try my best. Now, just speaking with Denise a moment ago, um, we're the only English-speaking qualifier here. What does that mean to you? It says a lot for our, our Caribbean, English-speaking Caribbean, mm -hmm. that Trinidad and Tobago has excelled in soccer over the last number of years, and we have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. We are certainly going to win a few medals this year. Well, we're hoping to win a lot this year because it has been bronze since the last time, from my understanding. I mean, we're all in red. You see my red? <laughs> we're all in red here as well. And, you know, um, I will speak to you know, a couple of people, Cateman and uh, Elisa and those guys, soon. But what do you believe that this team will do for us if we do get to go there? Like, where is this going? Is that a holiday in Trinidad as well? <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it would put Trinidad and Tobago on the map again, once mm -hmm. more, both um, the Pan Am Games and the CONCACAF, as well as the FIFA competition in the near future. Mm -hmm. So it will all go well for Trinidad and Tobago. Does that mean we get a holiday here too as well? Except for you in your office, you know, you can arrange that. But all that fun and joke aside, we want to see them do so much and give them all the support that they could possibly get. And we're going to do that, right, guys? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, we'll come out in our hundreds to cheer them. Hundreds? You think it's going to be 100 people here? <laughs> yes, yes. There, there, there are lots of Trinidadians here Absolutely. and who will support our teams, of course. And they'll all be wearing red. They will be wearing red. Send, me, send them out the message, yeah, girl. Come here, Trinidad and Tobago. We are waiting for you in Toronto. Well, you heard it from the Council General. You have our support, you have her support, and again, congratulations to everyone, and see you in, in July. I am here with the Nanku Rupchan family. What can I say? They're all in their red, they're all in their Soka Warriors t-shirt, they're all with the red flag. I mean, what else are you looking for? We did it. I'm here with Kate Mananku and his uh, niece and his niece. <laughs> and Kate Man, you know, when I was asked to bring out some people here, you were the first person that came to mind. I mean, this is what support is all about. Well, diehard Trinidad and Tobago fan, <laughs> sports teams, everything. You know, I was born there, love the country. You're a little shy right now, Kate Man. Show that enthusiasm that you have when you come to my office, yeah. man. I mean, these guys, you ask them anything, anything about soccer. So tell us what are the highlights you're looking forward to? What? Well, it's a whole atmosphere. Whenever you go see a Trinidad team play, Trinidad and Tobago team play, the fans are, are just incredible. Every, it is so alive, and they're so passionate, and they're so much fun. You know, I've gone to watch qualify for the World Cup. It's just an incredible experience. I've been, in, I was in Trinidad when, when they beat Bahrain, when they, to qualify for the World Cup, and the whole country just shut down. It is it, nothing you can, can really describe. It's something you have to experience. Now, you know, we have to go to Trinidad when the team wins because we know we got on a holiday down there, right? <laughs> Do not have any holiday up here. It's warmer down there. But on a serious note, you know, um, what are the highlights you have experienced in terms of soccer? Because you played soccer. And you coach no, soccer? You I, never played soccer? No, I've never played soccer. I mean, you gotta I, fool me with that. Yeah, so <laughs> I played North American football, mm -hmm. and I grew up playing sports my whole life. So, mm -hmm. so we're all very passionate sports fan, you know. 
growing up in Canada, we're, we love the Toronto Maple Leafs, and we, I follow all sports. Okay, let's correct that. It's not only him, his whole family. <laughs> his whole family couldn't be here today, but his whole family is. I mean, you die hard fans. Yeah, we're very, we're very passionate. We're very, very passionate. We're very proud Trinidadians. We're very passionate. And, you know, I remember when I was a little boy watching Hazley Crawford win 100 meters. I mean, that was just incredible. A 100 meter champion, you know, from Trinidad and Tobago. You, you can, words could never, ever, ever describe how I felt about that. It was an amazing experience. Now, um, are you planning to go to most of the games? I mean, it's impossible well, for all the games, but... I plan, uh, I, I, With this big flag that you have here, well, you can get a bigger one, by the way. I definitely want to go see the cycling. You know, mm -hmm. Remember, we have a, a Trinidadian cyclist, a Phillips, right, who came in fourth in the Olympics in the sprints. That's an incredible achievement. As a young kid, he came in fourth in the Olympics, and he deserves our support. So I will definitely try to be there. And I definitely plan to see some of these, mm -hmm. these, these football games. And I don't want to dismiss and forget that, yes, we have qualified for the um, you know, oh, yeah. sports uh, as well in the Pan Am, Pan, Pan Games as well. So, I mean, we're here for soccer today, but there are other qualifications as well. What do you want to say to all your team out there? Tell them, talk to them. I say, come out and support Trinidad and Tobago. You're gonna, you know, the competition is going to be great. They have world-class athletes on, on all levels and in different sports. And even our last Olympics, you see what they did? Well, they're only getting better and stronger. What do you want to say to the athletes? Because without the athletes, there's no team. <laughs> uh, well, the athletes were, as Trinidadians, we're very, very, very proud of you. And I know you guys are world class. You've all been training hard and you have our support, not only of myself, my family, the entire Trinidadian community. So we're here with Dwayne. And Dwayne, congratulations for everything you've accomplished in the past and the future and what you're doing here with the Pan, the Pan Am Games. Um, I have a number one fan here with me, Cayman Nanku, and Cayman is a diehard, and his whole family, and if the whole family could have been here, it would have been another story. Oh, uh, Cayman. We need another room, huh? We need another room, <laughs> and a bigger flag, that is, as well. So Cayman, you know, I know you had some questions for Dwayne, and you know so much about Dwayne. Oh, <laughs> so please, go ahead. Be well, be, being from Scarborough, I know he's from Scarborough. He's a phenomenal player. So I was very proud of him just from Scarborough. I also know he comes from the Caribbean, born in Guyana. So, so hopefully he's going to support him from supporting Chad and Tobago with his Caribbean culture and roots. Mm -hmm. And I hope so. I mean, he'll be out at the games. Was that your bio just now? Because I'm, I think so. I'm from Scarborough too. <laughs> I, don't to, I don't have to say anything no more. No, I will definitely be at the games uh, and supporting the games, having played in the games. I know what it means for a lot of these young kids um, having the opportunity, like some of the kids coming here from Trinidad and, and the Caribbean and Central America and South America maybe haven't even traveled outside their country. And it's through, uh, through avenues like this, through the Pan Am Games, that allows them to open up their eyes to a broader perspective. Now, whether they'll be future professional footballers, that'll be a bonus. But I think just the experience alone will open their eyes to the world and how big the world is and the world of opportunity. So, and that's, and that's the beauty behind, behind the games. One of the, the, I mean, I've spoken to a few people here today, um, you know, Denise and the Council Generals, and one of the things we're really proud of, we're the only English-speaking country there represented. What does that mean? Um, that's a, a good question. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, let me put you on the spot, it, of course. It, it means that you maybe have the, the upper hand because the other countries would be speaking either Portuguese or Spanish. Or, or, or Wouldn't that be a disadvantage? that they speak a different language and we can figure out what they're it saying. It's advantage and disadvantage because they won't understand what we're saying and we won't understand <laughs> what they say, uh, they're saying. But you know, in, in Trinidad, there's a lot of people that do speak Spanish, hence Port of Spain, right? Mm -hmm. So I know you do have like some of my relatives, they, they speak Spanish. And um, so it, I think we probably have more the advantage or Trinidad has more the advantage in, in, the, in that respect. But again, you know, ha being in Toronto, the most uh, diverse, and I think one of the best cities in the world, um, it, it's no better place to have it than here. You know, I know you might be a little biased right now because I mean, you <laughs> have to be for everyone, but I just want you to please just look out there and send a message out to our team. I appreciate that. We all appreciate that. Uh, he's going to be Trini for one moment here. Please, Trinidad and Tobago for a moment. Trinbegonian for a moment. Please. Yes, I just want to wish all, all the kids coming up here. I hope all you're ready because it's going to be a big competition. Be ready. <laughs> be, ready. Be, ready. be ready. Be ready. Be ready. No, but it's... Toronto awaits you. Um, embrace it. And we look forward to having you here in uh, 2015 Pan Am Games. Well, thank you so much, Dwayne. And to everybody out there, you know, I mean, the man said it, you know, come out, have some fun. 
You know, I guess I said Not before. Not too much fun. Because you know, you, know, you know you can get, right? Well, thank you all so much. Thank you so much, and congratulations and all the best.